personally, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I know uh, you are. Stunned. Yep. Let's throw up the graphic, uh, the trade that happened after our show yesterday. Yep. The Canucks getting Philip Hronik. Hronik. You, you uh, told us it was Hronik. It's actually <laughs> Hronik. Oh! Philip Hronik and a 2023 fourth round draft pick. From the Detroit Red Wings, in return, the Wings receive that 2023 conditional first-round pick that the Canucks got from the Islanders in the Bo Horvat deal and a 2023 second-rounder. You know, um, I I often argue with with Derek Wong and with Ryan Henderson and and yourself that I would love for our show, and this is very old school. I'm old school. I would love for our show – to take phone calls yeah. from listeners. Oh, it'd be back great. at the funny station, ten forty, whatever it was. We used to only take phone calls when there was an emotional subject. Yeah, usually regarding this, the Canucks, like a hot topic. I, I, I would love to get, and I know we've got the Delaney's okay tire and Langley inbox, and it's great. It's but awful. I would love to really, and you get this with phone calls. I don't care what the, you know, the newfangled kids say. You get this with with phone calls. You get yep. that emotion. I emotion. Wish, I wish one day, and Derek argues against me, and same with, same with Ryan. We can't think. Uh, it's old school. What talking about. You know, radio, and it, it, people don't do that on TV. But I'd love to get people's emotion today. You cannot be happy if you're a Canuck fan with this. No. There's just no way you can be happy. They, they had Canuck Nation. Patrick Alvine, Jim Rutherford, Francesco Aquilini. You had Canuck Nation happy for, what, four and a half minutes? What, what, whatever it was, after the Luke Shen trade. Yep. You had three picks in the top 40. You had seven picks for the first time ever yep. in the first, first four, four rounds, rounds. Uh, of a draft. People were Finally, you were doing what people have been begging you to do. Building your your future, and I know Jim Rutherford said retool, right? Rebuild on the fly, whatever whatever retool. he said. I but but it looked like they weren't they, they weren't really going in that direction. They weren't going in the Benning direction. They were going in some other uh, uh, direction. It looked like they had a focus on the future. Because forget the playoff berths. Th- that's how you get a Stanley Cup. And look, it looked picks. like they were finally doing the right thing. And then along comes this trade yesterday, and everybody, not everybody, because some people are actually in favor of it, everybody is just stunned. Stunned. This is so Benning-esque. This has been going on since 2014. I'll say it again. It's not about Canuck Nation, Canuck fans, people of Vancouver, wherever you are, if if you're a Canuck fan, you don't want to just make the playoffs. You you don't want to just, you know, fight for a playoff berth. Heck, you don't even want to just win a playoff round. 1970, nothing. No no, no Stanley Cup victory. That's what you want. This doesn't get them closer. This gets them maybe more competitive. Doesn't get them closer to Stanley Cup. I mean, I, I guess they're, they're, they're going to be happy. You know, it won't be this year, but in the next few years, you know, have a couple of home games, get some revenue from that in the playoffs, and 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 they'll they'll be pleased. No, no read on the market whatsoever. And I thought for four and a half minutes that they did. And I was fooled. My, uh, my phone went crazy after the trade. A lot of people confused, upset. I had people reach out I haven't talked to in, in months. What the heck is going on in Vancouver? Um, we just applauded them for seven picks in four rounds yesterday. And then you move a first rounder. You're in 27th place in the NHL this morning. You're capped out. You got no prospects on the farm. And you just coughed up a first rounder. Now. Donnie. And a second rounder. And a second rounder. Right shot, D. Let me say this first. Let me just get this out of the way. This franchise let their best right shot defenseman walk in 2020, Chris Tanner, for nothing. Didn't even make the guy an offer. He'd still be their number one right shot defense today if they didn't move him. To show you the craziness in the demand for right shot D in the NHL, 31-year-old Eric Branson got four years, $16 million in Columbus last year. There is a price to pay for right shot D in the NHL. And the Canucks have none of them. They have none on the farm. They have nothing on the farm for right shot D. Luke Shen just left. You're left with Myers and Bear. It was a big time need, but a big time overpayment. So you're you're not justifying the trade. I just told you. I I don't like you. We just bragged about seven picks in four rounds, and then they cough up two. Donnie, 
you, you can you can draft right shot defensemen. You can, okay, a- a- and uh, okay, and then today th- th- this this makes it worse for Canucks fans. Yeah. Uh, today, Steve Eisenman, and you're telling me you don't trust his judgment? He helped build Tampa Bay into a team that won a couple of Stanley Cups fairly recently. Um, they let go of Tyler Bertuzzi, who is about to become an un- un- unrestricted free agent. He goes to Boston. Man, the Bruins just loading up. And is Tyler Bertuzzi not a oh. Boston uh, type of player? Oh, big time. They get a couple of draft picks. They get yep. a first and a fourth. Not in 2023, in 2024. Detroit's going to have nine draft picks uh, uh, this year. And they could have made the playoffs this year, Don. Five in the first two rounds. And, and it just it, it just was, was so strange yesterday because I, I'm looking at this deal. So, f- you know, they have five picks in the first two rounds, Detroit. Maybe maybe they weaponize them and do something with this uh, tomorrow. They're only five points out of a playoff spot. That's it! So well, uh, and here's sorry, but here's Heronic. He's their top scoring defenseman, right? He's not their best defense, but that would go to Mo Sider, right? I think we agree on big that. Big time. But he's their top scoring defenseman, second on the team in ice time to, to Sider. You're five points away from a playoff spot. You've got Ottawa acquiring Jacob Chikrin, also five points away from a playoff spot. So I'm asking myself, well, well, why was this? Why, why would he be available? Yeah, why would like, he be available? why would you like? What, what does Detroit? What does Steve Eisenman know about? And he seems like I don't know much about him. He seems like a very good player. Seems he like is. He's gonna he's gonna ha- yeah. help the Canucks. But why would they make him available? Yeah. Like when when you're well, fighting for your first playoff spot in a long time, and he's a very important part of your team. Why would he be available? Well, I, I'll tell you why he might be available. Because in a year and a half, he's got a, a qualifying offer at 5.2. They just signed Dylan Larkin. Maybe they use some of the money for Larkin and his bump next year, Donnie. Uh, I, I do want to say this. Uh, rip the Canucks for giving up the high picks. Don't rip the player here. Everyone I've talked no, to. No, I'm not ripping I, I, him I at all. Rip, don't, this is a good defenseman. This is, you know, this is a good defenseman. Don't take that away. You can rip the team for what they coughed up, which was an extremely... Uh, High draft picks, Donnie. Let's be honest. Uh, high draft picks, but the, the player. And here's the other thing the Canucks are going to get stuck with, and I'll tell you this one, and I was told this by uh, somebody this morning. The agent for uh, Heronic, Donnie, he knows there's no other right shot D in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. This guy's not far away from being a UFA. I don't even want to guess what Heronic thinks that he might get on a new deal. But it's... Uh, you know, economics play a role in it, Donnie, sometimes too. And that might be a, one of the reasons why he was available. Okay, I, I'm going to go down a road that I, I might get me in, in trouble here. But I'm going to go down it anyway. And I'm, I'm just, again, wondering why when, you know, you're five points away from a playoff spot. Yeah. And Ottawa makes the exact opposite move, grabs a defenseman. You get r- rid of a defenseman, an, an important one. Yep. So I'm wondering why, why would he be uh, available? And... I'm going to go back to, uh, this is clip four, Derek. Okay. And let, let's just run this, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk over it, if you don't mind. This is mid-December 2022, and coincidentally enough, the Canucks are playing, although Aronic won't be in the lineup tonight. They're playing Minnesota tonight at, at Rogers Arena. Do you remember this play? Yeah, I do. I actually do. Aronic getting hit by Ryan Reeves, yep. you know, admiring his pass and yep. getting hit hard. Yeah. Now, I know he's out with an upper body injury right now. Aronic, have I got yeah. that right? Yeah, he is. He won't be playing. So, I, it, 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 you know, it doesn't have anything to do with this. No. And he did. He missed the rest of this game. This was early in this game, if I'm not mistaken. It was. Yeah. And he ended up playing the next game and, and, and went on from there. But uh, it, this was just a vicious hit by That's one of the you know biggest loads in, in all of hockey in, in Ryan Reeves. Didn't get penalized. No, he didn't. It was clean. And, and I, I just wonder when I see this, is, 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 do they know something? Is, is there something uh, here? He got injured Tuesday in Ottawa against Ottawa. I think it's a different injury from this. Players get concussed. I, I, I get that. Yeah, he got caught in the railway, uh, railroad tracks right there, Donnie. That's, uh, he, had, he, he was admiring the pass, the play, the other, and here comes the train. And may, maybe this is just me thinking Michael Furlan and, and, and the cutoffs. I'm not sure. But, but you tell me, why was this guy available? 
when they're five points out of a playoff spot. Yeah, and, he, and this he, happened, Donnie. And he has what? time left in his contract. Yeah, he has time left. This was mid-December. Right. Mid-December, Donnie, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, that's uh, a play, obviously, we can mo- monitor. He was hurt against Ottawa the other night. He, I think his shoulder is, is in a arms in a sling. We'll try to find out more. Uh, but boy, oh boy, Donnie, that was a big hit he took right there. Okay, so I'm speculating there. Yeah. Um, I, there was a lot of talk this morning on, on 650, Halford and Bruff, yeah. about how we should have expected this because, or something like this, uh, because Jim Rutherford came out publicly and talked about the retool. Yeah. Right? I, I, right? He, he said, I, we're, we're going to retool, not necessarily a rebuild, sounding a lot like uh, Jim Pan- Banning, so we shouldn't be surprised by no, this. No, we should not be. I've been saying for months and weeks, Rutherford did not come here to this city at his age for a oh, rebuild. Oh, that is just so just wrong. Just stop. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, it's so wrong. R- Rick Tocchi didn't sign here for a rebuild. Rick Tocchi didn't come here. Rutherford didn't come here. Alvin didn't come here if the owner would have said, here, let's tear it down and knock it down or rebuild. I've been saying it for months and nobody listens. This is a retool, not a rebuild. Don. But you're sounding like you're justifying it. I'm not justifying it's it. Wrong. I'm telling you why it happened. It, it's wrong. No. Yeah. It, it, he didn't come here at his age it, to rebuild. No, don't give me the if if you, if if you're hiring somebody and they're older and they want to move things along uh, quickly and that approach hasn't worked for ten years, you don't hire the guy. It's common right? sense tells you he wouldn't have come here at this age for a rebuild, Don. Just common sense. Well, okay, you know. But anyway, yeah. so uh, a lot of people saying today, well, they, he said retool. That's right. But then you see the moves over the last couple of weeks. You know, the Horvat trade, right? The Shen trade. You're 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 picking up these draft picks, and okay, well, yeah. maybe his definition of retool is different than than Jim. Bennings. Great. They got all these picks. Yeah. Finally, they're doing it. That's how you win a Stanley Cup. They haven't done that uh, before. Uh, uh, away we go. And then comes today's trade. And that, that was another element there. It, Absolutely. It, it just made you're it. You're bang uh, on, Donnie. And let me, let me get this. Uh, I am? Uh, you're always bang on. Just listen. Clearly, this trade tells us that the playoffs are a target for this team next year, Donnie. Okay? That, that, that's one. And, and, and number two, I'm going to tell you, you expect more. Uh, more of these moves to get them better. Not to drop in the standings, go for Bedard. I told you from day one they're not going is for Is Louis Bedard. Erickson available is what I want to know. Is because a, is, that, 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 I wouldn't be surprised.